This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Parsha Shlach. Uh, we have a couple of very interesting in Yanim on Parsha Shlach. Uh, we know, Chazal tell us that all the bad information that the Miraglim said about Eretz Yisrael could be construed and could be explained for the good. <laughs> could be construed for the good. What is it? For example, it says in the Chumash that Eretz Yisrael is Eretz Oicheles Yoshveha. It's a land that eats its inhabitants. So what exactly is good about that? How could the words Eretz Oicheles Yoshveha be construed for the good? So it's very interesting. The Radvaz has a tshuva in Chilak Aleph. Simon Tav Pei Dalet. And the Radvaz says that he's talking about whether you're allowed to embalm a mace, whether you're allowed to... Um, Preserve the body with different kinds of spices. Klala de Milsa, the rule is like this. The Chaldavar Shaisin Lames, Lechvaidai, Ay Letayalasai. Anything you do for the mace, for his honor or for his benefit, Ain Bai Misham Bizayan. It's not considered an embarrassment. It's not a disgrace. Vilay Misham Tsar, it's not considered a pain. Umizeha Tam Roisi, and for this reason, I see to it. Mishatziva b'shas moisai, someone who commands at the time of his death, sheyidnu sid b'tach kivrei, to put lime into his grave, k'dei sheyisachel habaser mehera, in order for the meat to be to be digested, to be consumed quicker. So then it's permitted. L'fi shamru b'medrash, because it says in the medrash, shein machnisin as hanashar mal mechitzasa that the soul does not go into its proper place in Gan Eden until the, until the flesh is digested, until the flesh is consumed. So, so it's very interesting. The, the Chazal tell us that the Neshama does not go up into Shemayim until all the flesh is uh, completely... So, so the Neshama, so to speak, is hovering. The Neshama does not doesn't mean it's not judged, but it doesn't go to its final resting place in, in Shemayim until the, ble- the, until the flesh is, uh, decomposes. Deteriorated. Decomposes. Decomposed. Right? So, okay, okay. So it, it comes out, he says, he says it comes out, this is a Shvach of Eretz Yisrael. When Chazal say that Eretz Yisrael is Eretz Oicheles Yoshvea, so it, it could be construed to mean Eretz Yisrael has the ability to cause the flesh to decompose much quicker and it allows the body to, uh, to uh, rot away and then the neshama could go to its resting place uh, much sooner. So while the Meraglim were mechavin uh, lara, the Meraglim were criticizing Eretz Yisrael, but nevertheless, says the Radvaz, it could be construed for the good that it's memar lecha l'sioshvea so that the neshama could find its resting place much, much sooner. Okay. We move on. It's very interesting. If you look in Masech to Bikurim, you'll find that in the Mishnah Bikurim, it says, Ketzad Bikurim, how do you take off Bikurim? A person goes down, B'Tach Sadeo, Adam Yar B'Tach Sadeo, V'roya Te'ena Shebechro, he sees a fig that is ripe, Eshko Shebikar, a cluster that is ripened, remind Shabika or a pomegranate that's ripened. So the Mishnah, we know that the Mitzvah Bikurim applies to any of the Shiva Saminim, right? You don't have to give Bikurim from apples or plums, but you have to give Bikurim from any of the Shiva Saminim. And for some odd reason, the Mishnah Bikurim only picks three fruits to illustrate the Mitzvah Bikurim. What are they? The Mishnah picks a fig, a grape, pomegranate. Now you'll say maybe it's going in the order of the Shiva Saminim and it just picked the first three. It's not. That's not the order. What does the Torah say? Eretz, Chita, Usa'ira, Gefen, Te'ena, Verimai. Eretz, Zes, Shemen, Udvash. And yet the Mishnah is picking these fruits out of order. I understand you know it's not going to say every single fruit, but why? Te'ena, Eshkol, Verimai. And then the Mishnah says, Koshre, Begmi, Ta'imer, Harei, Lubikurim. Okay. So says Rav Menachem Zemba. Rav Menachem Zemba was one of the greatest of Gedolim pre uh, pre-war Europe. 
Because my grandfather had this chus to learn with Menachem Zemba, personally, on a regular basis. Right? My grandfather was in a chabura of maybe four or five people that had learned together with Menachem Zemba. So he points out that the fruits that are mentioned in the Mishnah Bikurim are the exact fruits that the Torah says the Meraglim brought back from Eretz Yisrael to show the Genos Haaretz. They brought back what? A te'ina. They brought back Eshkol. They brought back Rimain. Eshkol is a cluster of grapes. Now it's very interesting. The Mishnah doesn't say, you know, a Gefen She Biker. It says Eshkol, the exact words it says in the Torah about the Meraglim. How do we understand this? So in the name of the Arizal, he brings down in the Chidushe Hagarma Simenun, that the mitzvah of Bikurim is a tikkun for the Ched HaMaraglam. How is the mitzvah of Bikurim a, a tikkun for the Ched HaMaraglam? So he says, the Arizal said, the Maraglim's lack was they didn't have Chivas Haaretz. They didn't have love for Eretz Yisrael. The mitzvah of Bikurim is to show what? Chivas Haaretz. So the mitzvah of Bikurim is a tikkun for the Ched HaMaraglam. And therefore, the Mishnah, Masech the Bikurim, specifically mentions those fruits that the Meraglim brought back to show the Genos Haaretz. It's interesting, when Moshe Rabbeinu is davening from the Meraglim, so he's trying to say, what is he daven? Yud Gimel Midr Sarachamim. But he leaves out one of them. What does he leave out? What, is, what does uh, Moshe Rabbeinu leave out? Noitzer, right? It says, Hashem Hashem Kerah Khan, Erechem Ha'am Chesem Nez, Noitzer Chesed Lo'alofim. He leaves out Chosavos. Why does... Why does Moshe Rabbeinu, he's davening for the, because of the Chena Maraglim. He's trying to invoke the mercy of the Baruch Shalom. Why doesn't he invoke the Chos Avais? Samban says. Because how could Klal Yisrael try to take advantage of Chos Avais? Chos Avais is that Hashem promised them Eretz Yisrael. They're rejecting Eretz Yisrael. So therefore Moshe Rabbeinu was not able to invoke the Chos Avais. Okay. Now we have something very interesting that both Two of my favorite all-time G'day Yisrael, they both say the exact same thing. Let's see if you can guess who they are. Sam Soifer and the Chida. They both say the exact same thing. Mekoshesh. Right? We know the Mekoshesh. What did he violate? He was Mechal HaShabbos, Hoytza. You take the Gematria of Mekoshesh. What's the Gematria of Mekoshesh? Mem Kuf is 140. Shin Shin is what? 740. 740. We know that the word Makaishesh is spelled Chasa with that above. So, so it's 740. And 740 is the Gematria of Shabbos. Shabbos is, of course, 702. Lamed Ches. 38. What's 38? He kept 38 of the Malachas, but he was Mavata, one of them. So, the Gematria of Mekoshesh is Shabbos Lamed Ches. How do we know if the Mekoshesh didn't keep the Mekoshesh? I don't know if Jeff David the others do. Otherwise, you know, no, the Gemara says in Masech the Shabbos, at the beginning of uh, Hazorik, right? That um, that was the one Avera that he did. And uh, so it's very interesting. Let's take a look at the Chsam Soifer. This is, uh, comes from the Chidush Chsam Soifer in Baba Basra, Kufi Yatesim Abayz. Mon is Gematria Shabbos Lamed Ches. The word Mon has a numerical value of Shabbos 38. Hainu Nun Pshuta. What does that mean? The, how is Mon 740? Because we've mentioned this in the past that the final letters, so a Tuf is 400. The final Chaf. Is 500. That is 40, and then Nun is 50. No, the final Chaf so the is 500. The final Mem is, is 600. The final Nun is 700. The final Pay is 800, and the final Tzavik is 900. And what's 1,000? Back to Aleph. Aleph is 1, and Aleph is Aleph. 1,000. Right, you got that? Aleph is one, Beis is two, Gimel is three, Yud is ten. Kuf, no, no, that's in other religions, but in Judaism, Tuf is four hundred. Final Chaf, the fine, right? How many final letters are there? Menatzpach, Mem, Nun, Tzadik, Pei, Chaf. So you have five final letters. 
Final Chaf is 500. Final Mem is 600. Final Nun is 700. Final Pei is 800. Final Tzadik is 900. Aleph is... Aleph, 1,000. Okay. So, so, so Mon, Mem Nun is Gematria, Shab, Islam, and Ches. Hainu Nun, Pshuta. The final... The, right, the final nun is called the nun pshuta. Mispar is shava meos. It has a numerical value of 700. The mispar menatzvach kiyadua. In the numbers of the final letters. Ki lamed ches malachas nesru. There are 38 malachas that are also movad hoitza. Shenirmaz b'man atzmai. B'chein mekoshesh gematria kanal. So too, the word mekoshesh has the same gematria. Sheshamar shabbos b'chalamed ches malachas. He kept 38 malachas movad hoitza. Except for hoitza shapik bakala. Now, Rabbi Sai, what's the connection between the man and the and Yitzia? The Haitsa Nesar Ayidei Man. Why was Haitsa Asr? Because of the man. Hashem never told us Haitsa was Asr until He gave us the man. Hashem said, "Go get the man." But Al Yitzia Yishma Mukaymai, Bechli Shabiyadei, right? Look at Haman. Fine. And by the way, the so the what? Have been Asar because of the building of the Mishkan too? No, because that's not where the Malach of Haitzah was given. The Malach of Haitzah was given by the Mon. Why do I have to say Mon is 700 for Gabba Otherwise, it's just like the Gematria of Mon is 740. 700? No. Uh, no, 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 that's Mek- Shabbos, Shabbos, Shabbos Lama Ches. Lama Ches. Rabbi Yisai, you look in the Nachal Kidumim of the, of the Chida, he brings down that in this week's parsha you have three mitzvahs that are juxtaposed. You have Avodah Zarah, you have Shabbos, and you have Tzitzis. These are the three mitzvahs that are Shokol Kenegad Ka Tarakula. And says the Chida, it could be, that because someone who serves Avodah Zarah is like a Koifer B'chal Taira, so... If you're a kaifer in the whole Torah, it's like your pay game in all 248 Avarim and Shasagidim. So therefore, you need to specifically rectify that by keeping Shabbos and the mitzvah of Tzitzis. Now, Chazal also say, and Tzitzis brings it down in Baba Basra, that Klal Yisrael said, after the Gzera the Maragdam, that they don't have to keep mitzvahs anymore. Because they said, after where Hashem's killing us in the Midbar, what do we have to keep mitzvahs for? We're not going into Eretz Yisrael. That's why they were Mechal of Shabbos. The argument was because of the punishment of the Raglim, you know, the Jews said, let's throw in the towel. We don't have to keep mitzvahs anymore. So the logic of the Mekoshesh was, he's going to be Mechal Shabbos. He'll be punished to show Klai, so the attacker, you're now to be Mechal Shabbos. And the Rem is this, as the Chidah, Mekoshesh is Begmat Shia Shabbos Lam Ches. That his Kavana was that they should keep Shabbos for the next 38 years in the Midbar. That's how the Chidah says it. The Gemachah Mekoshesh is Shabbos Lam Ches. He wanted, he wanted Klai Yisrael to keep Shabbos for the next 38 years. But it depends how many years they were in the Midbar. Even though simply they were in the Midbar for 40 years, nevertheless, Rabbi Yaakov Emden and Zvachim has a Cheshben that actually they were not in the Midbar for, 30, for 40 years. Okay. Two more items. We say every day. Well, the Maragdim was right after Miriam, right? So, the second year. But still, what? Well, 38 and a half. According to Rabbi Akram, then in total, they were only in the midbar of 38 and a half years. Okay. We have the Mitzvah of Tzitzis, and the Mitzvah of Tzitzis, it says something very strange. Daber of Bnei Yisrael It says, speak to the Bnei Yisrael And say to them So it should say Emar of Bnei Yisrael V'yamarta aleyim Or Daber of Bnei Yisrael V'dibarta aleyim What's Daber of Bnei Yisrael V'yamarta aleyim Is it Dibur or is it Amira? Pick your choice, you know Take your pick It can't be both What's Daber of Bnei Yisrael V'yamarta aleyim? No, Rizal, you ever say that, Pana Parsha? Dabra Lehi Yisrael, Marta Lehi, you say it twice every day. No, Lehmar is a different story altogether. Lehmar, see the Ramban and Vaira, Lehmar is a different thing. But what's, 
Daber ve'amarta. Which one? How, do, how should he convey it? Part of it is the lashon of gibor is kasha, and part of it is the lashon of emor. So should he say it nicely or say it softly? Part of it uh, uh, strictly and part of it softly. Okay, so we know. And a good speaker modulates his uh, voice. And, uh, yeah, but you don't have this by any other. You don't have this by other mitzvahs. You don't have this by any other mitzvahs. So why over here does it say Dabra Ben Yisrael v'Yamar Taleim? So Rabbi Kiv Eger points out very interesting thing. Now when it comes to tzitzis, you can't just find strings on the street and then attach it to your beged. You have to spin them l'shman. The tviya the Shulchan Aruch says in Simon Yud Aleph. The tviyah, the spinning of the tzitzis, has to be tavoy lishman. Okay? In other words, to say in the beginning of the, spi- of the spinning that you're doing it, lishem tzitzis, right? Shechon Aruch brings down, sheyoymar betchilas ha-tavoy, shehu oisakein lishem tzitzis. Or, says the Shechon Aruch, more likely a man is not going to be spinning threads. It's the job of a woman Right? It's a, more of a woman's job to spin threads. So the man should tell the woman, when you're spinning the threads, do so lishman. Okay? Says Rabbi Kivager. Does that hold today, too? That when they make the threads, the threads yeah. have to be lishman? Yeah, absolutely. They don't do it by machine or the person, the operator of the machine? No, they have to spin a lishman. They have to spin a lishman. Says Rabbi Kivager, we know when the Torah was given, it says, Kosoi Mara Lebes Yaakov. You should say to Yaakov, to the base Yaakov, and you should speak to the Bnei Yisrael. So Rashi understands. Who's the base Yaakov? The women. The women you speak to softly. The men, you say it as it is. The Sagi the Bnei Yisrael. So says Rabbi Kivega. Who is Mekayim, the mitzvah of tzitzis? Who is obligated the mitzvah of tzitzis? Men. Women do not have to wear tzitzis. Right? Women don't wear tzitzis. So, so the mitzvah is given to the men. So it's Daber el Bnei Yisrael. But there's one thing they need to tell the women. Be'amarta aleim ve'asu. You should say to them, ve'asu, how to make the tzitzis. So the dibur is going on the mitzvah. The amira is going on the asu. The asu is the spinning. The spinning has to be lishman. Who's spinning it? The women. So the women are spinning it. So Rabbi Isai, there, um, it, is, it is specifically catered to the women via Marta Aleim it's going on the mitzvah of the Tviya okay is, is, is that really a mitzvah it's one of the 613 mitzvahs no what to spin sitzes no it's not a mitzvah it's not a mitzvah but a Daber Bnei Yisrael is going on the mitzvah why say it so often because if you're speaking to women and you want them to listen really? so you have to you have to know how to say it it's sensitive yeah okay one last item. Now, Rabbi Isai, if anybody... Uh, this will conclude, you know, the, uh, the first section of Pasha Shlach. If anybody wants to hear the end of uh, the Wednesday Shir, they're welcome to stay. And uh, it might take maybe uh, some time. So you stay as long as you want, and, uh, and you'll leave when you need to leave. Let's just finish up this topic over here. The Gra asked a Gaval de Gakasha. Chazal tell us that what is the process of doing an Avera? In other words, how does a person do an Avera? Ayin Raya, the eye sees. So first you see something you like. Lev Chaymed, your heart desires. Uklimaisa Goymrim, and then your body carries out the act. First you see, then you want, then you do. Right? You got it? See, want, do. Eyes, heart, limbs. So why does the Torah say, Don't turn after your heart and after your eyes. It should say, Don't turn after your eyes and after your heart. Why does it first say, And only then does it say, So, it is reported that in the uh, side of the uh, Siddur of the Gra, on the Pasuk of Shema, he wrote three words on top of his Siddur, You know what he wrote? He wrote, Mibnei Maisa Shahaya. Because of a story that happened. What was the story? 
So this is what they say. The Gemara Menachah says there was a man who was very Zahir in the midst of Tzitzis. And one day, he heard that there's a, a certain Zaina overseas that she charges a very large fee, 400 golden coins. So, he sent her 400 gold coins and he made up with her to meet at a certain place. But in the end, the Gemara says what? As he's about to do the Maisa, his Tzitzis whipped him in the face. And he stahid into the Avera. What do you see from here? That when it comes to Znus, it's Shaykh, that the heart could desire even before the eye sees. Because this guy heard about the Zaina, even before he saw her, he wanted her. So first with this guy, it was the Lev, and then the Ayin. So even though the normal process is Ayin, Roya, Belev, Choymei, Duklia, Maisa, Goimrim, but it's possible when it comes to the Indian of Arayas, for what? It's possible for the lave to be chaymed even before the ayin is raya. So that's what the Torah is telling us about the mitzvah of tzitzis. The mitzvah of tzitzis is so powerful that it can ensure that even in a situation where first it's lave chaymed and only then it's ayin raya, even in that case, You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.